Namaskar, my dear friends and seekers. It has been a great pleasure and privilege talking to you on the subject of theory of happiness. I am sure that uh, you must have seen the rest of the videos which have been uh, serially numbered and then uh, you must be collecting the concepts and bringing some clarity in your mind that what this subject is all about. So going forward, I would like to introduce one more interesting anecdote, <coughs> a story which I read from Ramakrishna Paramahamsa's teachings. Somebody was asking Ramakrishna Paramahamsa that what makes us happy so instead of uh, giving him a theoretical explanation, uh, you know Ramakrishna Paramahamsa is known for his uh, beautiful way of uh, bringing uh, real life anecdotes and then explaining the concepts so beautifully because uh, he is a well known uh, kind of a philosopher as well as an enlightened master. Uh, who has brought about so much of clarity without bringing any complex theories. So the story goes like this and you will infer from the story what I am trying to convey uh, the way in which that uh, the great saint has attempted to do it. So there was a forest uh, in which uh, there was a stray dog which was running around here and there and uh, since there are uh, much wilder animals in the forest uh, uh, which used to go and uh, hunt for their food so this dog never used to have the ability to go and hunt its own food uh, himself so he always used to wait for the balance left out by the wild animals uh, so every day it used to get some kind of a food uh, fed because of some leftovers so like we keep in our refrigerator you know so the same way the dog used to get some kind of uh, food every day so once upon a time what has happened uh, it was trying to get some food and it didn't find any leftover carcasses uh, for it to feed on <coughs> So it was almost starving for the day and then running here and there to figure out whether it can get something to eat. Unfortunately, it could not get anything. And it kept on running around day one, day two, day three and so on. So it went on for almost uh, six to seven days. So the dog could not figure out any food. So it has come to a stage that <coughs> out of hunger it was about to die. So suddenly it saw one uh, animal left over which is pretty old. Uh, almost there was a very limited uh, flesh left out <coughs> that also must have dried off because it was a pretty long time. Uh, the animal must have been killed. So it suddenly thought that God is so kind so at least I am going to get a feast today. And then the dog went around and then started biting hard with the leftover, uh, mostly it is all skeleton, uh, with almost a few dried off uh, piece of uh, flesh. So, so vigorously it was uh, biting the carcass and then suddenly it found the blood was using and uh, it thought that, oh my God, that is, this is something like a very flush, uh, fresh and uh, you know, ready to eat and then it was licking that blood thinking that uh, it is going to quench its uh, hunger. So literally what was happening is uh, the blood was not coming from the leftover uh, meat. Uh, the blood was coming from its own mouth because it was tearing off because of the rough surfaces of the uh, dried out, uh, you know, animal. But the dog was misunderstanding <coughs> that the blood is coming from its food. So, what Ramakrishna Paramahamsa is trying to convey by the story is uh, something similar to what has happened to this dog, 
we hunt around and uh, keep on looking for some kind of a material object to acquire and uh, once we get the material object we feel that uh, kind of happiness internally and thinking that this happiness was brought about by the external object that we have acquired but actually the happiness is not coming from the object but it is coming from our own internal kind of a settlement of our anxiety and vibration created because of our uh, need for possessing it so that means uh, the same way the dog uh, felt that the happiness the blood is coming from the animal uh, which is actually coming from its own mouth in the same way the happiness is derived by our internal uh, sensation rather than by the external object so the story illustrates uh, very very deeply affected me when uh, when i learned from his book a long time back uh, that means every time when there is an anxious moment for acquiring something i used to remind myself uh, let me not be a senseless dog uh, which is going to you know tear its own mouth and uh, think that the happiness is coming from the external media so once you understand the limitations of the objects uh, which are incapable of really causing you happiness as we have seen in the previous uh, sessions that uh, if that object can give me the happiness it should give me the same happiness forever i gave the example of uh, marrying a person whom we were longing to marry or the kind of a television we wanted to possess and so on and so forth so that means uh, the extension of uh, acquisition of one object uh, will lead to the search for the next object and uh, this will go on and on forever uh, like the dog which was trying to seek uh, satisfaction uh, by its own uh, flow of uh, blood from its mouth so I hope that this story gives you some kind of uh, understanding Uh, of what we have discussed some time back so look forward to see you with uh, more and more anecdotal inputs which will ultimately help you to assemble the formula that uh, how you can manage your own sense of happiness in your life god bless you take care stay at home and stay healthy and look forward to see you again take care bye bye